Hi, this is Swati Sila from the softwaretestinghelp.com team and in this segment we are going to learn about acceptance testing. Acceptance testing uh, broadly is, you know, as the name indicates, it's basically the last form of testing that takes place before a product's delivery is taken. So acceptance testing is something that is performed by the client or the user. So the actual user who is going to use this software and the client who has asked for this software to be built, uh, acceptance testing is performed by them. Now, we um, a software can be built because uh, as a part of a service that, you know, a particular service provider provides to a client in order to uh, provide a solution for a business situation. Now, acceptance testing has mainly two major goals. So let's try to talk about them and I'll also give you an example to help understand acceptance testing better. Um, and also we will see what is the involvement of the QA team because we, we talked about how acceptance testing is performed by the client or the user, correct? So if it is a testing that is performed by them, then what are we going to do about it? I mean, what is our role in the whole acceptance testing phase is something that we will try to understand through this segment. So. Let's get started here. Now, acceptance testing, as, as I uh, said, has two major goals. One is the application standpoint. So we are going to check if the application is built according to the business requirements that the client has provided. So this is primary uh, reason, or you know, the primary goal of uh, acceptance testing. The second one is the contract. Now, when we are, when a, you know, a, a certain software company and a certain client, they collaborate together to build a software, both of them have some contractual terms, right? For example, you know, um, what kind of maintenance this they are going to do and what is the acceptability level, like, you know, the number of uh, um, non-critical open issues and at the end. So if you've agreed that the product is going to be delivered, if there are, you know, uh, less than three non-critical defects, it's, we are, the delivery is still going to be taken. So that's sort of any contractual terms that they're drawn up. Uh, those are also taken up in acceptance testing. But for the rest of our discussion, we are not going to get into the contract because QA teams generally don't get involved with this. This is something that the high-level management, uh, you know, will take care of. But acceptance testing is always about these two things, the contractual stuff and the application related stuff. Now when we come to the application related stuff, uh, it is specifically, acceptance testing is specifically called the UAT or the user acceptance testing. Now who performs this testing? It's usually the users or the clients. And where is this performed? Now, um, UAT can be performed either in the QA environment of the software services provider, in that case it's called alpha testing, or it could be done in the production environment that means the product is going to be released to the real-time users ahead of time for their feedback. So that is the beta testing. So irrespective of which uh, form or you know which environment it takes, the process is more or less the same. Now um, what is this? Obviously checking if the business requirements are met or not. So the focus of the UAT is validation of the business requirement. Now, why? what do I mean by that? So here I have Expedia.com, and in fact, any other site will do as well. Now, in this, when I'm performing the acceptance testing, assuming I'm the user, I'm not going to check if this field is taking special characters or if this field is working correctly, if the notification messages are coming up correctly. That's not going to be the focus of UAT because UAT comes after system testing. So when we get into the UAT phase, the underlying assumption is that system testing must have, must have caught all of those uh, basic issues if there were any. Now, uh, UAT is all about the business and it's not even about, you know, how many pages or the individual, you know, uh, links in the pages. It's about the entity of the business. So if, in our example, if we take Expedia.com, Expedia.com is all about tickets, right? This is like, you know, all kinds of hotel booking, there's a, uh, there's a flight booking, um, rental cars, all that stuff. 
So let's assume we are talking about an airline ticket. Now this ticket can go from the making phase, that means where you are entering the information, to being cancelled, right? Or you could go from making phase to confirming phase, which means you pay and the state becomes paid. And you could make the cancel, uh, make the uh, ticket, pay for it, and then cancel it. You could make the ticket, pay for it, and then issue the ticket, which means the user is going to use the ticket. So these are like, you know, pretty much like four or five flows, end-to-end -end flows that happen with the entity of the business. So we are not talking about the flow of, you know, what happens when you click on search, what happens when you, you know, choose the one way, what happens when you choose the multiple destination. All of these, you know, uh, details is not very important. What we are going to concentrate on in UAT is the entity that the business is all about here, the bookings. So we are going to see if we are able to make a booking and cancel it, one entire business flow, make it and confirm it and pay it, make, pay, cancel, make, pay, issue. So all of these business, you know, um, flows are what are checked in the UAT. Now, UAT also goes down, or, you know, acceptance testing can also, um, is, can also be treated as an autonomous testing project, which means it has the plan, design, and the test uh, phase, which is the execution phase. Now, in the plan phase, uh, before we even get to the UAT plan phase, uh, the QA team has to, uh, you know, gather the acceptance criteria. See, if the UAT users were to validate the application 100%, it's going to be treated as a completely different project, correct? So the QA team does the task of what are they uh, looking for testing. So sometimes they might want to see the performance of the application. They might want to, as I said, these end-to-end -end flows. What is it they are looking to check? The first thing is QA team gathers that. And also, what is our involvement supposed to be? This is a decision that is made prior to the planning phase. This involvement, it could be like no involvement, which means the um, UAT is going to be completely carried out by the users, in which case we don't have a lot to do. Uh, but this is not normal. No involvement is, you know, rare. Mm, there might be a role of an assistant. Um, we could be, uh, we could assist the users. So when we say assist, we will give, provide them the test cases. Uh, we would be on standby. If needed, we provide training on how to use the software. And when we are on standby, we, are, we answer questions that they might have on the application because they are fairly new to the application than we are. So that sort of a role. And if it is like, you know, um, completely, you know, uh, total involvement, which means uh, we are going to execute the tests, we are going to, you know, uh, perform everything and then give the results. The important thing to remember in acceptance testing is that result interpretation or decision is never the choice of a QA team. It's always the choice of the user. So even when there is, you know, a, a complete QA involvement, the test cases are executed by us, but the results you will still have to provide them to the users and get their uh, decision on it. So once we know what is the accept, what is the criteria that, you know, the UAT users are going to check for, and we understand what our involvement is, then begins the plan phase. Now, UAT plan typically happens in parallel with the system plan. Sometimes there is the same document, test plan document. And in the plan, all the details like, you know, the scope of UAT, uh, who is going to do this, the exact dates, etc., etc. So if there's a communication protocol, what is that going to be? If there's a test case document, you know, test case results, if they are to be um, documented, what is the template that we're going to use? All of those details are documented in the test plan. Now, uh, UAT test plan and acceptance test plan is created in parallel with the system test plan. Sometimes it is the same document as well. Once the plan phase is done, then comes the design. Now, design is nothing but picking up test cases that relate that are related to the acceptance criteria. So, 
these test cases, usually QA team does not have to recreate them because we have the whole test suite with us, correct, which we have we would have used for system testing. So UAT test cases are typically a subset of the system test suite. They are end-to-end -end in nature. And, uh, you know, uh, the QA team normally doesn't have to recreate them. The test can pick and choose which ones are relevant and uh, supply it to the QA team. And the execute is either when we are either, so execute is the phase when the actual testing happens. And at this phase, we either we could be on the standby or we could be executing. And after the execution, the results are analyzed to make a go or no go decision. This is also called the acceptance decision. So um, once this decision is made, obviously the software either goes into production or it does not go into production. So um, UAT testing is all about the acceptance decision. Are they ready to take the delivery of the product and are they ready to uh, say that the product is at a satisfactory level of you know um, the way it's supposed to be? So that is the main aim of uh, acceptance testing. Now having said that, Acceptance testing is also testing, correct? So there might be some bugs that we find here. And uh, definitely that's not good news for the QA team, but the perspective always should be the product in hand at the end of the day, not about individual teams and how it, uh, a certain occurrence of a defect reflects on them. So when a bug occurs in the UAT and you know the UAT users find it, then you know usually all the teams sit down and decide on whether the product is going to go into production as is. If it's a minor bug, uh, then the, uh, the decision of product going into production with the existing known uh, issue, that's the decision they make. Otherwise, they want to defer the issue to a future release. So right now the, it goes as is, but then they will schedule that at some point of time that bug is to be fixed. Or again, in very rare cases, they might delay the go live date which means they will first fix the issue and then only move on this is only in the case of very severe issues not for you know regular spelling mistakes or something very minor so acceptance testing is the final testing that is done by the client before you they accept the delivery of the software product there are two things that are tested the application related testing and the contractual testing now con contract and the you know whether all the, all the terms are met or not is not something that's in the scope of QA team. So we did not discuss that in the session. Uh, UAT is predominantly performed by the users. It is uh, It could be either in the QA environment or the production environment. And business requirements are validated here. During UAT, the focus is not on the application or its individual elements. It is more on the entity around which the business revolves. So there are three stages planning, designing, and ex uh, executing. QA team gathers the acceptance criteria, decides on their involvement, plans for the testing, UAT testing phase, and provides the test cases. And in the execute phase, either the users or us will run the tests and provide the results. And based on the result interpretation, a go or no go, or an acceptance decision is made. If bugs are encountered, they are either you know um, left as is, or they are deferred to a future release or um, the current release date is pushed back and the, um, the issue is first addressed and then uh, the product goes live. So that's about acceptance testing. Thank you.